Are there any statements? I call the member for Chifley. Madam Speaker, um, Australians uh, in this generation of Australians have benefited in a way the previous generations have not uh, in being able to see the world. Uh, we've been able to travel a lot more. We've been able to immerse ourselves in the way that others live, and we've been able to see the world be brought closer uh, together, obviously through the benefits of uh, modern communication. And more often than not, when Australians turn home, return home, I think it's safe to say that the first thing they think of when they see Australian shores from the, uh, from the comfort of an airplane seat is uh, how good is it to be home. One of our first thoughts is to think about how great Australia is, uh, and as much as we've enjoyed our time abroad, uh, we also uh, respect the fact that we're coming back to a country that's uh, been so good to us. And in acknowledging that in the context of the, uh, the incredible uh, events that have occurred beyond our shores, uh, it is important to recognise that uh, as much as we're grateful for what this country gives us, uh, we cannot be complacent. Uh, that this is not a gift uh, that uh, fell in our laps by virtue of luck and good fortune, but that we all have a responsibility uh, to maintain this, not just for ourselves, but for the people that follow us. That uh, the peace and stability of this country is very much dependent on our own actions. But it is also uh, right too that Australians uh, do not uh, just um, enjoy uh, this stability and peace uh, and then feel that they have no responsibility uh, when others do not have the ability themselves to take advantage of this. And by that I mean when we see suffering beyond our shores, uh, we are as a nation uh, prepared to stand up and say that when something isn't right, when the scales of justice uh, and fairness are tipped uh, the wrong way, uh, we will act uh, as a nation. We will act with others uh, to ensure uh, that people are not uh, placed in harm's way. And certainly we abhor unnecessary violence and have been rightly sickened uh, by the scenes uh, that have emerged out of northern Iraq and out of Syria uh, and have said that this is simply uh, unacceptable uh, in any day and age and for any people. What we have seen has been hor horrific, uh, and the actions of Islamic State are to be condemned and condemned in the strongest uh, possible terms. Uh, we cannot uh, sit back and let these actions continue without response. The barbarism, um, the uh, inflicting of genocide, uh, and ultimately uh, what this is about is imposing tyranny, pure and simple. Uh, within northern Iraq, what we're seeing is a group of people uh, abusing religion uh, in an effort to impose tyranny, blackening the name of religion and faith uh, to impose uh, their view that um, basically they would have a system of governing uh, that would exclude everyone other than those that have access uh, to the barrel of a gun uh, or some of the horrific uh, other things that we've seen inflicted on others. Nations like ours, built on our values uh, of inclusion, of acceptance and fundamentally uh, democracy, uh, and the greatest traditions of the Western democratic uh, traditions themselves uh, within our nation uh, cannot abide what we are seeing, and nor should we. And those extremists that are undertaking that, uh, when they look to us and when they look to the coexistence that is achieved within a nation like Australia and in most uh, Western democracies, um, they, cannot, they cannot stand what they're seeing. They do not want uh, to see coexistence. They want to be able to continue to find enemies that they can persecute, uh, and they do not want to be able to see the success that we've been able to achieve in a nation like ours, where regardless of your faith and background, you're able to participate in the democratic channels of this nation and to be able to uh, not only have a say, but build something better. And so uh, uh, our vision uh, is in contest with a horrific vision, and we cannot simply sit and believe that by ignoring what's going on, that this will go away. And hence, uh, we have seen um, uh, the actions of a number of nations. Uh, we have seen uh, the leadership that's been demonstrated uh, by the Prime Minister and the Australian government uh, in tandem with other nations that have been uh, also horrified, particularly in terms of uh, the US, seeing what's happened. Uh, and we have said that uh, we will not allow this uh, to continue. As I said, we can't be complacent. We wish uh, for peace and 
prosperity and stability for ourselves as much as we wish it for others. And that's why the humanitarian effort that has been undertaken, uh, as I described it the other day, has been timely because we could not sit on our hands and see uh, what is occurring, uh, be inflicted on others and to see the horrific loss of life, the abuse of people's human, human rights, the mistreatment of women, uh, the, the things that we've seen on social media, uh, we cannot let continue. And the strength of our unity in this has been critical. Uh, as a nation, we have put aside politics, we've put aside, regardless of your views of the world, we have worked as one uh, to not only speak up on this but to act, and uh, certainly in relation to the humanitarian effort that's been undertaken and the type of work that's been done so far, uh, that's been critical. The call for help by the Iraqi government has also been critical. They need help, we can provide it, we must do it. And so we have. Uh, we have uh, also, it's important to say, watched in horror as to what's happened in Syria, uh, and an inability of the international community to be able to uh, deal comprehensively uh, with the genocide that's occurred within those borders uh, has uh, caused a lot of people concern. And certainly uh, I would uh, uh, make the point, and this is not something that I have come up with, others have observed it as well, that um, these, uh, these theatres of conflict are being used actively as recruitment platforms by extremists who have sought to uh, distort what's happening there to be able to bring people within their fold uh, to then swell their ranks of extremism and then perpetuate this uh, elsewhere. We cannot allow this to occur. Uh, as much as we are acting on Iraq, uh, I also think it's important that we, as an international community, recognise that the continuing the deterioration of the situation in Syria uh, cannot continue and we've got to be able to find a way for peace there. As much as I have reflected in my initial uh, comments in the chamber on what's happened uh, beyond our borders, it's also important to reflect on what's happening within our borders. And uh, if I can say, when the Director General of ASIO speaks, David Irvine, I think it's important we listen. Um, the Director General is right. There is an issue uh, here. There are people that are being uh, seduced by extremism. Uh, that are being radicalised and are being tempted to go and enact on this extremism elsewhere. And there is a rightful concern that once they have uh, done and undertaken horrific acts uh, beyond our borders, what happens on their return? Uh, we again need to act as one. Uh, I am heartened by both the words of the Prime Minister and the Opposition Leader uh, that what we are fighting here is extremism. We are not fighting faith, we are fighting extremism. And uh, while we may have differences of opinion on approach on how we do it, um, I certainly from this point uh, say, uh, in this vantage point, being able to have the honour of, of representing people in this parliament, say to people that this is not the path to travel down. Extremism is not going to give you the solution or the answers or to help anyone. Extremism is more a recipe for further violence and will also split people further apart at a time where we need to bring people together. The worst thing you can do is to force people into corners where they um, refuse to engage and refuse to act and refuse to build on that spirit of coexistence I reflected on earlier in my remarks. So we do need to act. And I also, um, while we again might have difference of opinion on how things are done, uh, if the Prime Minister of this country, regardless of your politics, um, asks to sit down to sort these problems that confront the community, all I say to people is um, I urge them to sit and to talk and to respect the fact that the Office of Prime Minister has reached out and is seeking a way to bring people together to fight something that is a common threat to us all, extremism. So um, I certainly would hope uh, modestly that people could take on board these words uh, in being able to accept that invitation uh, to work together for the common good of this nation. Uh, if I may, in, with indulgence, could I uh, get a bit more uh, time just to add to these comments? Extra time's granted. Thank you. Um, we, we cannot have a situation where we have continued division in some communities that believe that faith is being singled out in trying to deal with the threat of, ex of extremism. This is simply not the case. People of goodwill and of um, uh, from all different backgrounds want to work to deal with this and we do need to, uh, to deal with this issue. Um, there are people in the community, in the Australian today, 
on the front page of The Australian detailed a very moving story, I thought, of a father who felt shamed by the actions of his son in taking up an extremist path and going to do uh, terrible things in Syria. Um, this is a person who found, uh, as most migrants do, um, what Australia has provided for, opportunity and an ability to look at your children with pride and say, you are going to have a better life than I had. And you're going to have a better life than what um, you know, we would have had if I had stayed home. And so for us, as I often say, for migrants and the children of migrants, we feel an enormous debt of gratitude to this nation that we have been given an opportunity to live in a way, not just in a material sense, but to not live with the fear of persecution, not to live in the fear of conflict, not to live in the fear that we can't be the best we can be because we're not extended the type of privileges that are granted by a democratic nation like this. So if we accept there is a debt of gratitude that must be repaid in this nation, then we cannot sit back and think that it's someone else's job to fulfil that debt. We all have a part to play. So beyond urging people not to take up the path of extremism, let us also identify that extremism and deal with it. We shouldn't just wait for the government to hand out money to deal with this, as much as I welcome the commitment that has been made by the Prime Minister on this front. You know, money will not solve this problem. What's in our hearts and minds will. And to be able to recognise that, again, even though we have these disputes across the table here, I would never want to see anything happen to anyone across that side of the table as a result of violence, as much as you wouldn't want it on this side. And so we can be joined in this national endeavour to build a stronger country by weeding out this extremism, dealing with it head on and ensuring that we can continue to repay that debt of gratitude in the way that we all seek and we think is the right thing to do for this country. And I thank you for your indulgence, Deputy Speaker. You're welcome.